Hello and welcome everybody, King Demps here bringing you a bite size breakdown. This is a series where I break down key rounds for you in 10 minutes or less. Now the round I have for you today is from the Team Spirit versus Astralis series. This was both teams opener for the Pro League and we're currently at 1-1 in the series. So pretty key point in the series, this map decides who's going to take it home. Now we're at a key point in the map itself as well. So as you can see, it's 7-6 in Astralis's favor and we have a buy round for both teams. It's currently trickled down to a 4v2 in favor of Team Spirit. Now Team Spirit need to win this round in order to have a chance of winning the half 8-7 and seeing as Ancient has so far been a CT-sided map, they pretty much need to take this round to have a hope of winning the game. Whereas Astralis, if they win this round, it's probably going to be a 9-6 half and it's probably going to be an Astralis victory. Now, the first thing to notice about this clutch is to have a little look at the map and see that the CTs are split 2 and 2. Now, the reason the CTs being split 2-2 two, two is important is because the CTs need to be careful about how they play the round out for the next 10 to 15 seconds. They need to be careful not to get isolated in a 2v2 with Bubski and Lucky. As you can see, Bubski and Lucky grouped over towards the B site here. If they can isolate a 2v2 on the B site in the next 10 to 15 to 20 seconds, let's say they were already very close up to this smoke, for example, Bubski and Lucky, then it would be very easy for them to isolate the 2v2 in the site and it would essentially turn a 4v2 round into two separate 2v2 rounds, assuming Bubski and Lucky don't die on the entry. Now, what this 2v2 split and this potential scenario does for Astralis is it gives them a little bit of time. What you'll see here is that Bubski slowly is going to clear out the middle of the map He's going to have a little look in middle, wait to see if he can catch a rotating spirit member. And when he can't, he groups up with Lucky and they head into Cheetah and then into Cave to set up their hit onto the B site. What Team Spirit did with the time while Bubski and Lucky were grouping up in Cheetah and Cave for the execute is they got information. Mir the whole time was sat in cube watching top mid and he knows from the entire round he's been holding cube. He's gotten two kills towards Cubby from cube. Mir knows that nobody has passed through mid into house. He's been watching it all round. He's killed two people who tried to cross. Nobody else has crossed since. So Mir knows for a fact that there's nobody in this middle part of the map. Nobody can be looking for a backstab around the CT spawn area. During this time, Sumdai Young was pushing A main and Yard, and he's just come out in bottom mid. Now, as you can see, Sumda Young getting this information in bottom mid has caused Mir to rotate through CT spawn and he's going to join his CT teammates in back halls. Essentially, what Spirit have done here is so far played the clutch out perfectly. They've gotten the information in mid, they've isolated Astralis' location, it has to be somewhere around this B site. They know nobody has crossed through mid here, so Mer can rotate safely through CT spawn and join his teammates in back halls. So far, Team Spirit are playing this 4v2 perfectly. Now, what we can see is Astralis have committed to this B site. They're sending the AWP in first, basically to see if they can get a free entry. And this is where the push stalls. Now, Astralis have a decision to make here. As you can see, Bubski's come back to keep an eye on Cheetah and watch the potential backstab. And that tells you a little bit about Astralis' thinking already at this point in the round. Bubski's already aware that there is likely somebody from Spirit looking for a backstab. And the way Astralis are playing, not pushing too far backwards or forwards, sticking around in Cheetah and Cave, tells me they expect they've been isolated on the map. I think Astralis know Team Spirit, know where they are, and I think they're also not willing to try and rotate away from this B site, even though they've been smoked off, because they've got no map control anywhere else. They have no idea where Team Spirit's players might be, waiting for them to just run past and kill them. So rather than take the risk, Astralis stick with what they know. They know they've got a hold of Cheetah and Cave. They know they're nice and close to the B site and they've got an idea about how they want to hit it. I like this approach from Astralis because I think it keeps the round doable. If they had decided to rotate away from the B site in panic because they'd been smoked off, I think they both just walk into Sumdai Young's crosshair and Sumdai Young wins the round cleanly for Team Spirit. And as the round out plays a little bit more, the smoke fades, Bubski smokes B short, Lucky Molly's long, throws out a flash to Bubski, and they hit the site. Now, this is a very important moment in the rounds, and this is where I actually want to switch over to Sumdai Young's perspective here. 
because as you can see, he's cleared out middle. He's not got too much to worry about. He's about to go through window and essentially set this backstab up. I think Sum Dai Young is a little bit far away in the round here. I think Sum Dai Young's backstab could have come in a lot quicker, particularly considering the amount of information that Bubski and Lucky are giving away with their footsteps here on this site take. Now we'll just play the site take out a little bit longer. Astralis get the bomb down. Mistake number one. Mistake number two. Mistake number three. Now, that was a pretty quick series of events, so what we'll do is we'll go through that a little bit more slowly and pinpoint out what the three mistakes I think Spirit made were at each point that they made them. Now, here is the first mistake I think Team Spirit make, and it is Dexter being in this essentially one-and-done angle. There is no way that anybody can trade Dexter out here if he misses the shot, and I think it's an unnecessary risk to take in a 4v2. Now, there is one thing that is worth mentioning is potentially Dexter didn't realize that this smoke had not yet faded. And so maybe he expected one of his short B players to be able to trade him out. Either way, with this pillar in the way, it's not a super favorable jewel for the short B player to take to try and trade out a player playing at this point in the site. So I've got to be honest, I think Dexter made a mistake here. He doesn't need to play such a risky angle. And as you can see, he goes down for free. Now, almost immediately after the next mistake, when Magix dies, right here. I can't understand why Mir hasn't swung from his angle here. Mir is playing a perfect angle to be able to trade this one out. And if Mir does get the kill, the backstab, which is about to come in from SDY, is suddenly a lot more potent. As we can see, we'll switch to Lucky's viewpoint here. Lucky has the presence of mind at this point with two retakers being killed from back course he has the sense to turn around and look for the backstab and it's a free kill see here that Mir is traded out it's worth saying at this point that some die young's backstab could probably have come quicker and i think that would have been the key factor in this retake i think dexter's risky peak and magix's untraded death don't matter if Sun Dai Young's backstab comes in a little faster. We're taking a look at Sun Dai Young's view of this clutch. He's carefully watching the flank, keeping information for Team Spirit, making sure Astralis aren't rotating away from the B hit that they're setting up for. Now, this is all perfectly fine. I don't think Sun Dai Young can be expected to do anything more here because he's got to be aware that Astralis may try and rotate and catch the solo lurker that Team Spirit are most likely utilizing. So he's keeping a passive top mid hold. This is the point at which Lucky and Bubski are now hitting the site and he's hearing grenades. I think Sum Dai Young can start to move a little faster here. I think he's a little bit slow on the uptake. He's walking a little bit too much, but up until this point, I guess you, it's not the end of the world. Now, this is the point at which I think Sum Dai Young needs to get a move on. Once that bomb goes down and people start taking fights in the site, I don't know why he's walking anymore. He's part of the crunch, getting Lucky and Bubski to turn around because they hear his footsteps. That's only a positive thing for Team Spirit. It means that Lucky and or Bubsky are not looking at where three players are com coming from, and they are looking at where one player is coming from. I think at this point, Sum Dai Young, the horse is already bolted. I don't understand why he's walking for his backstab here. And I think that's probably the single biggest mistake that loses Team Spirit this round. Dexter's risky peak was definitely too risky. I think Mir probably should have traded out Magix's death. But if Sum Dai Young gets a move on with his backstab a little bit faster, I think all of those factors become null and void and Team Spirit win the round. I hope you enjoyed that key round breakdown there, guys. If you want to see more, like, comment, favorite, subscribe, all the good YouTube stuff. And any suggestions, put them down in the comments. I'll see you next time, guys.